on to our Bible study tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray the word of God will enrich every life tonight. We'll open our eyes to see what we have not seen before and to know what we didn't know before. And the joy of the Lord will be our strength as we study to make ourselves approved unto God, a workman, a believer, a child of God that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. The word profit every life tonight in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the Bible study. We glorify your name for bringing us together for a good purpose. We're praying, Lord, you'll be mightily present in our midst tonight in Jesus' name. And we pray you enlighten everyone and make everyone beneficiaries of the word in the Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that as we are partakers of the word, the blessing of studying your word will come upon every life. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're studying from John today, gospel according to St. John. And we're reading from verse chapter 21, reading from verse 6. John chapter 21, reading from verse 6. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the sheep, and ye shall find, ye shall find. They cast therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Come to verse 9. As soon then, as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on thereon and bread. And in verse 12, Jesus says unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? As we look at the verses of Scripture tonight, Verses 1, verses 6 to 14. We are studying on what Jesus did in this appearance of his, a glorious appearance after his resurrection to his own disciples. This will be the third recorded time that he appeared to them. And verse 12 is very significant. Jesus says unto them, come and dine. It was a great privilege, and it was a source of strength to eat, to dine, to drink with Christ. Eating, drinking, dining with the risen Christ. And you remember that Thomas said, my Lord and my God. And for Thomas, it must have been a great surprise, a great wonder, a great privilege that the one you referred to as my Lord and my God now said, come and dine. Thomas then understood, Peter understood, all the other disciples understood that they were eating, dining with, the, with God himself. That may surprise you. Eating, drinking, dining with God himself. Let's go back to the Old Testament. We're looking at Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 1. Genesis chapter 18, reading from verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him, that he is unto Abraham, in the place of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door, in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes, talking about Abraham, and he looked, and lo, three men, God and then two angels. Three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, understand, God appeared unto him. The Lord appeared unto him. He said, If now I have found favor in thy sight, Pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Then the story goes on, and then you come to verse 7. In verse 7, and Abraham ran 
unto the herd and fetched a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man and he hasted to dress it look at this and he took the butter and the milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them that's before the lord and before those the two angels three of them and uh, he stood by the he stood by them under the tree tell me what you find there and he did eat and so what we're studying today that came to the disciples peter thomas and then the rest of them is repetition of this here is the almighty that appeared unto abraham and it says the edge there the deed it look at verse 13 and the lord said unto abraham after eating what he had prepared and the lord said unto abraham wherefore did sarah laugh saying shall i of this shorty bear a child which am old is there anything too hard for the lord at the time appointed i will return that's the almighty god he was there and he ate what abraham had prepared and he said this time next year i'm here now i will return unto thee according to the time of life sarah shall have a son dining with the lord and dining with the almighty god brings a blessing and so as jesus said unto his own disciples come and dine it was an open door not just to eat but to have fellowship and not just to dine but to be blessed in a supernatural way. And as you die with the Lord today in his word, supernatural blessing will come upon your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24. And here I am reading with, I'm reading from verse 9. Exodus 24 verse 9. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and they saw the God of Israel. Think about that. Think about that. That these men in Israel, Moses and Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and seventy elders of the children of the of the Israelites, he said they saw the God of Israel. Of course, not in his uh, fullness of glory, but they saw him. And there was under his feet a it were a paved walk of a sapphire stone. As it were, and as it were, the body of heaven in his clearness. They knew that they were looking at the supernatural, at the ancient of days, at the one that created the heavens and the earth. And they saw him in his glory, in his majesty, and in his clearness. And it says, and upon the nobles of the children of Israel, he laid not his hand. Also, they saw, tell me, they saw, tell me out aloud, if you believe the Bible, I said they saw, and tell me the rest of that verse and did eat and drink eating and drinking dining in the presence of the almighty god it had happened then and jesus christ in his earthly ministry he told his own disciples we're looking at luke chapter 12. in luke chapter 12 he had told them that in the kingdom that is when we go to the other side and we go to the kingdom eating and drinking and dining with the almighty is not going to come to an end and so we're told in luke chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 35 luke chapter 12 verse 35 let your loins be guarded about and your lights burning and ye yourselves like unto men that wait for their lord when he will return from the wedding that when he cometh and knocketh, he may open, they may open unto him immediately. Look at this, verse 37. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to, tell me out there, to meet 
and will come forth and serve them. And you understand that when we get to the great beyond, and when we get to the kingdom of God, Christ himself, the Lord of glory, Christ himself, the ruling and the reigning Christ, he says he will serve his own people and we shall dine with him. And what is still going to be in the future? It was in the past in Genesis. It was in Exodus in the past. And now what is still going to be in the future? Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. And remember, remember, what they were eating when he said, come and dine, it's not a product of their hand. It's not part, it's not the fish that they brought, because by the time they came out of the sea and they saw him, and what, before they even brought the food, he said, come and dine. And there was bread. Where did he get that? He got that from heaven, the bread of angels. And thank God, when the day comes in the coming kingdom, I'm going to be there, you are going to be there. We're going to die with him in Jesus' name. Did I hear any amen in the church? Look at Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 16. Luke chapter 22, verse 16. After this life, eating and drinking, dining with the Lord, is not going to come to an end. Because of the pleasure of heaven, and because of the promise of God, and because of the goodness the Lord is going to reveal. Look at this. In chapter 22 of Luke, verse 16, for I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until, until. He said, I'm taking the Lord's Supper with you now. I'm partaking of this with you now. Then I'm going to heaven. And I will no more partake of this anymore with you until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. I will dine with him. Look at verse 18. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until, until, until the kingdom of God shall come. Come and dine. It's going to be fulfilled in a supernatural way when we get to the other side and the Lord will dine with us. And we will dine with the Lord. Look at verse 28. Ye are they, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my Father has appointed unto me. That, tell me, that ye may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. That's still future, and it is coming. And I pray that you'll be partakers of that in Jesus' name. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. And we're looking at what is going to happen in the future when Christ sets up his kingdom. We're looking at what is going to happen in the future after the dead are risen and then we're raptured. We're going to be with the Lord. See what will happen on that other side. It says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. Look at this. To him that overcometh, I will give to each. To him that overcometh, I will grant to eat, I will give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Look at verse 17. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the churches. To him that overcometh, will I give to eat of the hidden manna and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving except he that receiveth it. I'm looking for that day. I'm waiting for that day. And I believe you're looking and waiting, and the blessing of God will enrich our lives today as we prepare to dine with him on that other side. We're looking at Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. Revelation chapter 19 verse 6, and I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah. The, for the Lord God omnipotent ruin is, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. 
and his wife has made herself ready and to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and he says unto me right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper marriage supper there's dining there marriage supper they're sitting and drinking there marriage supper there's celebration there those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he says unto me these are the true sins of god as a preview of what is going to happen in the kingdom that's why jesus now after his resurrection appeared to his own disciples and then as we look at everything that happens he concludes by saying come and dine dining with the lord is an assurance of acceptance you see peter you see thomas you see all the disciples they're gone astray and they're gone the way they shouldn't have gone and jesus saying come and dine i forgive you I'll but you call your kind of drifting, and now you can come. Number one, an assurance of acceptance. Number two, it was a testimony to fellowship. You see, when the people of old, when they dined together, when they ate together, it was a show of fellowship among them. And here is the reason Christ, when he said, come and dine, it's like he was calling them to a new, a renewed fellowship. Number three, it was a sign of communion, a sign of communion, heart to heart, mind to mind. He loved them, and they also loved him, and he said, forget your drifting, and forget your backsliding. I call you now, come and dine, a sign of communion. It was the establishment of friendship. When two people had not been seen eye to eye, one is going this way, the other one is going the other way. You see, as they come together, as they reconcile together, and now they have one mind to show that they have reconciled, and now they are in fellowship together, they establish their friendship by eating together. Not only that, it was a sharing of power. You see, Jesus Christ, when he died with them, he was already giving them something. Because food is to strengthen us, is to empower us. And now he brought this food from heaven and he said, come and dine. It was a sharing of his power. It was a transmission, the transmission of strength. Strengthening them, encouraging them. They were weak in their faith. They were not sure anymore. And because of the doubting, wanting to transfer and transmit strength unto them, he said, Come and dine. It was an impartation of Christ's heavenly virtue. He was sharing himself with them. He was sharing his provision with them because he wanted to impart heavenly virtue unto them. Not only that, a preview of future feasting in the coming kingdom. He had told them that when we get into the kingdom, you will eat with me, you will dine with me. As a preview of that, he said, now come and dine. The commencement of communion for eternal destiny eternal destiny they were going to the final destination and it says this is the commencement come and dine tonight we're looking at this study under the subject come and dine and as we look at these verses we're dividing into three parts number one the characteristics of the command of the risen christ you see christ gave commandment before he went to the cross and now after going to the cross and dying and being buried and being risen again raised from the dead he now gives a commandment and you want to compare the commandment before and the commandment after and see the characteristics the characteristics of the command of the risen christ point number two the care and the concern of the revealed christ he came to reveal himself unto them these disciples that had gone i go a fishing and we go with you too and now he came to reveal himself to them and we see the care as he revealed himself and as he reveals himself to you today he will care for you 
he'll be concerned for you. And he'll make provisions for you, inexhaustible, in Jesus' name. The care and the concern of the revealed Christ. Point number three, the call and the compassion. The call and the compassion of the reigning Christ. The call and the compassion of the reigning Christ. So we're coming to point number one, the characteristics of the command of the risen Christ. We're coming to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 6. And you said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the sheep, and ye shall find. He had asked them earlier, children, have you any meat? And they said, no, we don't have any meat. And now he gave them this command, cast the net on the right side of the sheep, and ye shall find. What kind of commandment is that? And did he give a similar commandment before? Yes, at the commencement of, the, of his ministry. At the first time when he met Peter. That's exactly the commandment that he gave. And you are coming to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 4. Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought. You see the commandment at the beginning? You see the commandment after his resurrection comparing them? They're the same. They're the same. You know why? Because Jesus Christ remains the same. And when you come to the same situation, you come to the same circumstance, the same commandment he gave in the past, that same commandment is given. Even now, the risen Christ gives that same commandment. And then you find when he gave the first commandment, Peter said, we have toiled all the night and we caught nothing. But at thy word, at thy word, because now I make you my Lord, I make you my director, I make you my captain, and I surrender and submit unto you what I will not naturally do, and what I will not do for any man telling me, because I know about fishing, I know about the sea, I know there is no fish there, and we have toiled all the night, and we caught nothing. If any other person told me, I will not accept. I will say, come and do it yourself. You are not going to see anything here, but at your word, because you told me, I will cast down the net and when he did they caught a multitude the same thing happened here now they are touched all the night they caught nothing and jesus christ from heaven jesus christ who rose from the dead jesus christ the risen christ commanded them the same command a similar command and then they obeyed they went the same way what are we saying we're saying uh, as jesus remains the same his commandments remain not the same. The commandments he gave before his death, and the commandment is given now after his resurrection. Compare them, they are the same. If you have any commandment today from anybody that is different, that contradicts the commandment he gave before he died, you know that one is false. That is not from Christ. That's the voice of the Antichrist. If it were Christ, it would be the same as what he had said before. Let me show you. We're looking at Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 18. Matthew chapter 4, we're reading from verse 18. That's the commandment he gave before. It says, and, and with Jesus walking, and Jesus walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. Look at this. And he says unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. That's the commandment he gave before. That's the commandment he gave on this other side before he went to the cross. What commandment is he giving now after he rose from the dead? Come to John chapter 21. John chapter 21, reading from verse 21. Peter, seeing him, says to Jesus, Lord, what will this man do? 
Jesus says unto him, If I will that he tarry until till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. What did he say at the beginning, before he went to the cross? Follow me. What's he saying now that he rose from the dead? Follow me. You see, the commandments of Christ remain the same. They do not change. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 6. And we're reading from verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What's the commandment there? Put God first. Put the kingdom of God first. And love God more than anything on earth. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Let that be your priority. Let that be the number one in your life. Let not anything compete with the kingdom of God and his righteousness in your life. What's he saying now? Look at this. John chapter 21. He said, in that other place before the cross, make God first in your life. Give him priority in your life and seek him first, the kingdom of God, and love him more. Love God more. Love the kingdom of God more than anything on earth. What's he saying? What was he saying after his resurrection? John chapter 21, verse 15. It says, So when they are dying, Jesus says unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, Lovest thou me more than these? Lovest thou me more than all this uh, fish of God? Lovest thou me more than material things on earth? Are you making me number one? Are you loving me above every other thing? Are you loving the, are you loving the kingdom of God above every other thing in your life? Before the cross, before his death, he says, put God first. Love him more than anything in your life. Let him be number one in your life. And now, after his resurrection, he says, Peter, I come with the same request. I come with the same demand. I come with the same commandment. You must love me more than anything, anyone else. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2. And see that from glory, it still demands that same first love. And when that first love is not there, he questions us and he has controversy with us. We're looking at Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. You see? That's what he still wants to be. Whatever he commanded before he died, and now he died, he was buried, he rose again. After that resurrection, he's still demanding the same theme. And so he says in verse 5, remember therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. You remember before you went to the cross, before he died, what he demanded of all the people that followed him. Hey, look at this in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 16. What he demanded before the cross, what he demanded before he died, is still demanding today. He wants us to understand, as Christ has not changed, his commandments have not changed. As Christ has not changed, his demand on believers have not changed. As Christ has not changed, what he demanded before the cross is what is still demanding after the resurrection. Luke chapter 9, verse 16. Jesus says unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. That's what he demanded before the cross. Go thou and preach the kingdom of God. That's what he demanded, commanded, before he went to the cross. And another also said in verse 61, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell which are at home at my house and jesus said unto him no man 
having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. He said this is what you concentrate on. And what's he staying now? After he rose from the dead, exactly the same thing is still saying. We're looking at Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, in this chapter of Mark now, is risen from the dead. Risen from the dead. And what did he say after he rose from the dead? Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's what he still demands after resurrection. After he rose from the dead, the risen Christ still demands the same thing he demanded before he went to the cross in his earthly ministry. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. He still wants us to preach the gospel today. And look at Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. I'm reading from verse 42. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Watch therefore. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. Watch therefore. Watch therefore. For ye know not the hour when your Lord doth come. Look at verse 44. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour that ye think not the Son of Man cometh. He says, watch. That's what he said before he went to the cross. That's what he said before he died. That's what he said before he went and paid the penalty for our sin. And now that he rose from the dead, what's he saying? Because he said, watch before now. What's he saying at this time? Come to Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse 2. Revelation chapter 3, verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. Look at this. This is revelation. This is after the resurrection. This is after his ascension. He's now speaking from heaven. And the same thing is said before he went to the cross. He's still saying the same thing. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain, which are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. He was expecting that he'll render perfect service unto the Lord, just like he demanded before he went to the cross. Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And now, after the cross, after the resurrection, nothing has changed. It's still that same Jesus. And then he says in verse 3, Remember therefore how thou was received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know the hour when I come unto thee. He still expects the same thing today. Revelation chapter 16. I'm reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. He said, Watch at that time before he died. And now that he's risen from the dead, he's still saying the same thing. He's ascended to heaven. He's still saying the same thing. Revelation chapter 16, verse 15. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches. Blessed is he that keeps watching. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Well, to summarize that part, look at Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. What Christ commanded before his death is still commanding today. After his resurrection and after his ascension. And now that he has gone to heaven, he's still saying the same thing. Why? Because he has not changed. Because he does not change. Because he will not change. Because he cannot change. His commandments are the same today as ever. Do you remember he said, repent and believe? He's still saying the same thing today. Do you remember he said, abide and endure to the end? He's still saying the same thing today. Didn't he say, watch and pray? He's still saying the same thing today. 
didn't he say, sin no more, lest a worse sin come upon you. Still saying the same thing today. Sin no more. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. Didn't he say that you'll continue in his word and continue in his love? Exactly the same thing you know, he's still saying today. Did he not say, confess my name and preach the gospel? He's still saying the same thing today. Confess my name and preach the gospel. You remember he said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good words and glorify your Father who is in heaven. He's still saying the same thing to every believer today. Let your light so shine. Didn't he say, teach them whatsoever I have commanded? He's still saying the same thing today that as you go and you tell other people and testify to other people, help other people, you will teach them whatsoever I have commanded. You remember he said, rejoice in persecution that when you are persecuted instead of uh, you know sinking your say, sinking your face in shame and reproach that you cheer up and you rejoice when you are persecuted he said that before he's still saying the same thing today he said seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness put God first Make God to have the priority in your life and in your ministry. He's still saying the same thing today. He said, follow me and be faithful in all things until the end. What he said before, he's still saying today, follow me and be faithful in all things at all times until the very end. Look at Matthew chapter 28 from verse 20 teaching them to observe all things don't subtract teaching them to observe all things don't add teaching them to observe all things don't be quiet on some things that jesus said and only say one percent out of what he said only ten percent out of what he taught teaching them to observe all things whatsoever all things whatsoever i have commanded you remember he said this one after his resurrection he said this one just before he left them and ascended into heaven all the things i commanded all the things i taught all the things i put line upon line precept upon precept before my death now that i'm risen from the dead you're going to all the world teaching them to observe all things whatsoever i have commanded you and lo i am with you how often always even to the end of the world and let the church say amen. amen and so we understand the characteristics of god of christ's command is that those commands they change not they remain the same we come to point number two now the care and the concern the care and the concern of the revealed christ we're coming to john chapter 21 john chapter 21 reading from verse 7 therefore that disciple whom jesus loved says unto peter it is the lord it is the lord is saying the same thing he said before it is the lord is giving us a kind of multitude of fish into our net it is the lord is ever the same by his action you can tell it is the lord by his commandment you can tell it is the lord by his demand upon our lives you can tell it is the lord by the manifestation of his miracle working power you can tell it is the lord now when simon peter heard that it was the lord he got his precious coat unto him for he was naked and did cast himself into the sea and the other disciples came in a little ship for they were not far from land but as it were 200 cubits dragging the net with fishes as soon then as they were come to land they saw a fire already they saw a fire already jesus the risen christ in his care, in his concern, in his compassion, in his provision, in his preparation for them, already kindled, made the fire, of course, there, and fish thereon, already before they brought their fish, already had fish, and he brought that on, already cooking for them, and bread, 
They had no bread. They had nothing. But Jesus brought this one. And Jesus says unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up, and he drew the net to land, full of great fishes, and hundred and fifty and three. For all that, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. You'll see here the care of the Lord. This lovely Christ and this lowly act of the risen, royal, ruling, reigning Christ reveals his care, reveals his compassion, reveals his concern for all his own. The care of Christ for his own under the new covenant is not less than the care of God for his people under the old covenant. You remember the children of Israel under the old covenant? The Father provided for them. God Almighty provided for them. That was the old covenant. Now we're coming to the new covenant. And the door of grace is opening for everyone who will believe to enter into the new covenant. The question is, are we going to have the same care? As those people under the old covenant, the answer is yes. Are we going to have the, the same provision and the same preparation under the new covenant than the old covenant? The answer is yes. You will see that the Almighty God prepared and provided for the children of Israel, for Moses, and for Aaron, for Nidab, for Abihom, and for the twelve leaders of all the tribes, and for the seventy elders that were chosen, God provided for them and provided for the rest of the children of Israel. The same thing, the same thing. The Lord is assuring us like the Father did for the children of Israel in the old covenant. So Christ, the Son of God, Christ our Savior, and Christ our Lord is providing for all his people today. In fact, the care the concern, the compassion, and the provision, and the preparation, and the privilege for us in the new covenant is greater and higher than those of the old covenant. The Lord will provide adequately for every member of the church. And for us here today, you want to be very sure and certain that as he did for his own disciples, he will do for you. He cares, he provides, it will provide for all of us in Jesus' name. You see there that Jesus already kindled the fire and then put fish on and there was bread. And as they came, he didn't have to say, okay, you do this, you do this, you do that. Everything was available for them. How was it under the old covenant? We're coming to First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, I'm reading here from verse 5. First Kings chapter 19, verse 5. And I see lay and slept under a juniper tree. Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. Old covenant, the angel had come. And Elijah did not know this provision was available. He just he slept. He was in depression. He was in despair. He was tired. He was weak. He was about to give up. He said, God, kill me. Take me out of this world. Because things are lonely and things are terrible. And in that moment of discouragement, the Almighty God sent an angel and prepared food for him and said, Arise and eat. You see what Jesus Christ has done? The disciples were discouraged. The disciples did not know that there was any future for them again. And so Peter said, I go a fishing. And then they also followed. They said, well, go with you. And then all through that night, they caught nothing. The frustration must have been great. The discouragement must have been great. And now Christ came and he prepared the food for them. In your discouraging hours, the Lord will come to you. He'll prepare everything you need and provide for you in Jesus' name. Uh, look at verse 6 there. And he looked and behold, and there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at the head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too strong, is too great for you. There's a journey ahead of you. 
a good journey the journey of a pilgrim and the journey is too great for you and everything you need for your christian life everything you need for the journey ahead of you the lord will provide in jesus name and he arose and he did eat and drink and he went in the strength of that meat he went in the strength of that meat you know the purpose of the lord and the reason why he feeds us why he provides for us why unexpectedly when peter thomas and the others were not expecting he came and provided the meat for them so that they will rise up and move on in the strength of the lord today you rise up you'll move on in the strength of the lord in jesus name it says 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of god you will not lack anything the lord will supply all your need amen amen, amen. luke chapter 22 verse 35 luke chapter 22 we're reading from verse 35. Here is the assurance the Lord wanted to give the disciples because now he was going to heaven. But in these, uh, in these uh, 14 days of many infallible proofs of his resurrection, here is what he provided for them in Luke chapter 22, verse 35. And he said unto them, When I sent you without pause and scrip and shoes, Lacked ye anything? Lacked ye anything? And they said, and the church said, and the believers said, nothing. You will not lack. It will supply your need. That's why we're told in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 13, reading from verse 5. Fiber, it tells us over here in our Bibles, let your conversation be without covetousness. Be content with such things as ye have, for he has said, for Christ has said, for the Almighty has said, for our provider has said, for the rich risen Christ has said, I will never leave thee. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, so that we may boldly say, what do you say? The Lord is my helper. What are you saying? Are you saying it confidently? Are you saying it boldly? Are you saying with that assurance? The Lord is your helper. The Lord is your provider. The Lord is the giver. He'll take care of you. He will take care of you. This problem will not drown you. Unemployment will not destroy you. Farming will not get the better of you. He will provide for you. All the people may hunger. All the people may lack. You will not lack. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me look at verse 8 jesus christ the same yesterday and today and forever what he did for them he will do for you psalm 34 psalm 34 i'm reading from verses 9 and 10 psalm 34 we're reading from verses 9 and 10 telling us that he cares Telling us that he's concerned. Telling us that he will provide. Telling us you in particular, you will not lack. Psalm 34 verse 9. Oh fear the Lord, ye his says, for there is no want, there is no lack, there is no need, there is no scarcity to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not lack, shall not want any good thing. Psalm 37, reading from verse 3. Psalm 37, reading from verse 3. It says, Trust in the Lord and do good. So shall thou dwell in the land. You will dwell in the land. Nothing will cut your life short. And verily thou shalt be fed. Verily thou shalt be fed. Who is that talking about? 
Thank God it's you. The blessings are coming. No tears. No crying. No sorrow. No regret. No depression. No despair. Thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord. And he shall give thee. And he shall give thee. And he shall give thee. The desires of thine heart. Don't give up. And don't give up those desires. They are going to be fulfilled. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him. And he shall bring thee to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness. You are not righteous in vain. You are not righteous for nothing. That righteousness will produce benefits in your life in Jesus' name. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself, because of him who prospereth in his way. Your prosperity is coming on the way. Or because of the man who bringeth wicked devices to pass. He tells us in verse 25. Verse 25 of Psalm 27, 37. Psalm 25, it says, uh, I have been young, now I am old. I have not seen the righteous forsaken. He will not forsake you. Nor his seed begging a bread. You will not beg. Your children will not beg. He will satisfy you. He will bless you. Bless you and bless your children. Bless you and bless your family. And all the good desires of your life, of your wife, of your husband, of your children, one by one, they'll be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Psalm 81, verse 10. Psalm 81, verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide. And I will feel it. Open thy mouth wide, and I will feel it. Verse 13, Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had watched in my ways. I shall soon have subdued their enemies. Your enemies are subdued. And turned my hand against their adversaries, the haters of the Lord, shall have submitted themselves unto him, and their time should have endured forever. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. He's going to feed you with the finest of wheat. And with honey out of the rock will I satisfy who? Will satisfy you in Jesus' name. Psalm 84 verse 10, Psalm 84 verse 10, For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand, is better than a thousand. A day in thy courts, that is when you come for Bible study. That is when you come for worship. That is when you come to honor the Lord and you come to pay your due respect unto God. A day in thy courts is better than a thousand. A thousand, that's almost three years. I had rather be, I, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God. That's a worker, that's an usher, that's a security man, a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory to you to your family, to all his disciples, and no good thing shall he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Time of blessing, time of his care, the time of his concern, and the time of his provision, all your needs are supplied. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him for us all, how shall he not with him also 
freely give us all things. I'm going to make it personal for myself. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for me. Delivered him up for me. How shall he not with him also freely give me? Give me? You believe that? Give me? Your expectation will turn to realization. Look at Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 19. Philippians chapter 4. Reading from verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Be expecting, be waiting, it's coming. Need supplied. Your wants supplied. Your life blessed beyond your expectation. Second Peter chapter 1. In Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3, according as his divine power has given unto us how many things? All things. How many things will he give you? All things. How many things are you expecting? All things. God is faithful. Christ is faithful and trustworthy because according as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue, whereby are given unto us. I will not lack. I said I will not lack. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Thank God Christ has provided, and Christ is going to meet all your needs. He cares, he's concerned, he's compassionate, he provides, and he prepares everything you will ever need. That's the revelation we have concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. We come to point number three now. The call and compassion of our reigning Christ. The call and the compassion of our reigning Christ. So we're coming to John chapter 21, reading from verse 12. John chapter 21, verse 12. Jesus says unto them, Come and dine. And none of the disciples does ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord, they knew it was the Lord. He revealed himself to them. His action revealed him. His care revealed him. His compassion revealed him. His miraculous provision revealed him. Knowing it was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them and fish alike. He came and is coming today to you. He'll give you everything you need. And as he gives, you will receive in Jesus' name. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Peter was referring to this when he was in the house of Cornelius, that they ate with him and he died with him. Look at Acts chapter 10, verse 40. Acts chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 40. He never forgot that you will not forget the blessing of the Lord. It's going to be a special blessing. It's a spectacular blessing. A time you will not forget in your life. You will not forget this day. Impartation upon your life. The goodness of God upon your life. Peter did not forget. Acts chapter 10, verse 40. Him God raised up the third day. And showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us. Look at this. Who did eat and drink with him after he rose? 
from the dead. Peter remembered. We ate with him. We drank with him. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. You see, he provides for his own. And you are part of his own. He will provide for you. I said he will provide for you. You will not lack in your life in Jesus' name. Uh, let, let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, uh, John again. We're looking at chapter 4. John chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse, reading from verse 10. John chapter 4. Reading from verse 10. Here the Lord is telling us, John chapter 4 verse 10. Uh, and Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, I know it is that says unto thee, Give me to drink. Thou wouldest have given, have asked of him, and he would have given you living waters. He's going to give you more than physical bread, physical food. Yes, he will do that, but living water he will give you. Salvation he will give you. Joy in your heart he will give you. Spiritual need in your life he will meet in Jesus' name. Verse 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. It will satisfy you to the fullest. Morning, afternoon, and evening, it will satisfy you to satisfaction. And he will fill your heart with all the requests and all the answers, solution to your prayers in Jesus' name. But the water, the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. He'll start now, he'll continue tomorrow, he'll continue next month, he'll continue next year. Till the end of your life, you will not lack. John Chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. In that day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. It's going beyond the physical food now. It's going beyond the natural blessing now. It's going to the, uh, to the blessing of God, which is for our soul, for our spirit, for our heart. It is for our eternity. He that believeth on me, that this, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of your belly, out of your innermost being, rivers of living water. But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him shall receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he's glorified, and he said, he's going to fill us to overflowing. He will do it in your life. Because we're told in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. That the promise is giving us, the care is giving us, is going beyond the physical. It's going beyond the natural. In Romans chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. For the kingdom of God is not limited to healing and provision. For the kingdom of God is not limited to bread and butter. For the kingdom of God is not limited to employment and provision. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness. He'll fill you with righteousness. And peace, he'll fill you with peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost, you will have joy in Jesus' name. Everlasting joy, wonderful joy, never-ending joy. The Lord will bring in your life in Jesus' name. He's saying again today, come and dine. He invited them and they ate and they drank with him privately at the seashore on earth. Now he's telling us, come and dine. He's inviting us and we shall dine with the king of glory. We shall dine in the heavenly kingdom. We shall be with him. We shall see him. We shall serve him. He will serve us as well. We shall be like him as he is. We'll sit with him at the table in the kingdom. 
we shall be dressed in white, we shall reign with him, we shall rule as kings. You will rule as a king. He's inviting you today, come and dine. Take the water of life, take that salvation, put on the royal apparel, be clothed in white, and be clothed and endued with power. Prepare and be ready for the saints of God are going to dine with the Lord. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 17. Revelation 22 verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that heareth say, come. And let him that is a thirst, come. And whosoever will, and whosoever will, anybody there today, and whosoever will, anybody wanting satisfaction today, anybody wanting fulfillment of the promise of God today, anybody wanting to drink and drink and drink and dine with the Lord unto satisfaction today, whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. It's available for you. It's available for me. It's available for every one of us. Today, he will bless us. The rest of our lives, he'll keep on blessing us. And when the rapture will take place, the dead in Christ shall rise. And then we which are alive, we shall be together with them, shall be cut up. Thank God, you will be there. When the saints go marching in, you will be there in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 19, I'm reading from verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice. We have cause to be glad here on earth as Christians, as children of God. We have cause to rejoice. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready. I'll be ready. I will be ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he says unto me, Right, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed people, where are they? I say, where are they? You'll be called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. He will tell you, come and dine. He says unto me, these are the true saints of God. Tonight, you can start dining with Christ. He'll supply all your needs. And you don't need to cry for that, sorrow for, for that, roll on the ground for that. It's available and it's free. And it says, come, come and dine. You'll be blessed tonight. Rise up on your feet and say, Lord, here I am. I come according to your promise. Here I am. I come according to your provision. Come and dine. Come and dine. Don't close your mouth. Don't keep quiet. There's blessing waiting here for you. Salvation available. Sanctification available. Healing available. Prosperity available. Provision available. Jobs available for the jobless. Everything you need. Miracles available for everyone. Come, come, come. Come and dine.